Alan Woodward, the Sheffield United captain, receives a silver salver from club chairman John Hassel to mark his recent achievement in breaking the club's all-time league scoring record. Woodward, a tremendous servant to this club, scored his 141st league goal just before Christmas to break the previous record established by Derek Pace, the club's centre-forward back in the 1950s. And a great reception for Alan Woodward from the Sheffield United supporters. Two other United players have got a special reason for remembering today's match. Number five, Eddie Cahoon, plays his 450th league game. And at number 11, Stephen McKee from Northern Ireland plays his first. Two men on the field called Faulkner today. Number six there for Sheffield United is Steve Faulkner. And in the Luton Town side at number five, we've got John Faulkner. And don't be confused either by the two Futures. At number nine, Ron Future for Luton. And at number six, his twin brother, Paul. And I wonder whether the presence of Paul Fuchsia in the Luton side is one reason why the England team manager Don Reby is here today. He's already picked him for the under-21 team. The City of Sheffield, the backcloth, as Sheffield United in their famous stripes get the match underway, playing from left to right. Luton in white today. Paul Garner with the throw for United. Hampson getting in against Chambers. Here's Woodward. And that's an indirect free kick, I suspect. Alan Woodward obstructed by Steve Buckley. So an early chance for Sheffield United to make something having lost their last two home games in the league. Played back for Longhorn. Gary Hansen with the throw. Picked up, though, by Fuchsia. These two twins, almost identical. John Faulkner to Price. West. Husband, offside. Ron Fuchsia. Luton, by the way, have played 13 matches away from home, including today's. Only nine at Kenilworth Road, so perhaps their league position a little misleading. But uh, they're three points behind Sheffield United, both teams having played the same number of matches. There's Guthrie with a chance, and a fine save! Oh, what a smart piece of goalkeeping! Guthrie was clean through, a mistake in the defence. It looked on for a goal, but Alexic reacting extremely well to tip that header over. Franks is right on the line. And that was Eddie Cahoon up there too. You'll notice Sheffield United pushing plenty of defenders forward on the set pieces. Eddie Cahoon, an obvious one at number five with the beard. Sheffield defenders pushing out to try and catch Luton offside, but a good run through by the fullback Buckley. And an unceremonious clearance from Cahoon. That's the way to beat the offside trap, to push men forward from deep position. Steve Buckley doing it well. Paul Fuchsia has come forward, but it was well seen was that by Hansen, who's got Hamilton to his right. Good challenge by John Faulkner. And that is not offside. One for husband to chase here. And Fuchsia's in there as well. And this is Fuchsia. And that is 1-0 for Luton. They've beaten the offside trap. And they've scored. Ron Fuchsia got the final touch, 
When the first ball went through, the defenders had played square. The linesman was in line. He waved them on. Jimmy Husband made the running, but Ron Fucci was in support, and it was he who gave Luton the lead. So, ten minutes gone, and Sheffield United, whose home form has been worrying recently, find themselves behind. This is Longhorn to Garner. Paul Future up well. Perhaps he was held there. Cahoon takes over. into Woodward, Cahoon has continued his run and that was quite a cool header away by Paul Fucher his brother put Luton ahead Franks is in there again Cahoon got up well and everybody now piling out of the Luton penalty area, and they're now playing the offside game, and they've been caught as well. That's for McKee. Woodward is in the middle, being joined by Hamilton. This is Woodward. That could have been 1-1, one -one, but he was just off target. So, the mistake made at the other end by defence trying to play offside was almost made by Luton. Pushing out in a long line, and again an intelligent ball played. McKee taking advantage, and from his cross, Woodward, for once in his life, not accurate. Aston. Alan West. That's for Aston. It was a good ball, was that? And it might well have been 2-0. The early signs here are that defences are very much living on their nerves. John Aston put through well by Alan West and would have perhaps hoped to have hit the target at least there. Hamilton trying to dart in. Looked like a loop and throw to me, that. Reinsman was... Uh, the field away and it's gone to Sheffield United Woodward Faulkner's header that's a corner off Buckley well I've not often seen a team push three of their back four up the corners but that's what Sheffield United are doing Steve Faulkner, Cahoon and Franks are all in there Cahoon got up well, and Fucci was there too. Oh, and hooked off the line almost from Young McKee. Young McKee was so near to his goal on his league debut. He got the shot in, but Steve Buckley was the man on the line. Oh, and again, a good piece of goalkeeping. This lad must have been coached by Tony Waiters down at Plymouth, the goalkeeper himself, and it certainly shows. Woodward. Early ball was good. So was Faulkner's header. But here's Cahoon. McKee. Nicely round Price. Guthrie goes in. Here's Longhorn. Decision by the referee, in my view. They appealed for a penalty, but a defender can't really be expected to avoid those. They threw their bodies in the way, and that was not intentional handball. The shot thundered in by Longhorn and blocked by one of those two white shirts.
as though it might have been a foul by uh, Hamilton, but in any case, it's half-time. With Luton leading by a goal to nil. A goal which was really the result of beating the offside trap, put away by Ron Future, his fourth of the season. And his brother, twin brother, Paul Future at the back, has had a fair bit to do with the fact that Sheffield United have not been able to cancel that goal out. But certainly in that first 45 minutes, there could have been more goals at each end. The floodlights on at Bramall Lane, and it was indeed at Bramall Lane, Sheffield, that the first ever football match under electric lighting took place in this country back in 1878. So the floodlight centenary comes up next year. For the moment, Luton Town lead here in the second division by one goal to nil and now play from the left. Away by Cahoon, and there's an offside. Flags up. Hamilton. Husband's header. Chambers. Bought that. That was husband who blocked him. And crossed and found Ron Fucha. And that's Aston, and that should really have been two. John Aston will be frustrated with himself over that. Well, that was an example of a player making what looked like a lost cause into a scoring chance. And the player was Jimmy Husband. The ball seemed to be dead, but Husband persevered. He got the ball back. He crossed it. Ron Fuchsia pushed it on. And just a bit more power from Aston, it would surely have been 2-0. Here's West. The linesman has flagged, but I think it might have been Ron Fucher in the middle and not Aston to whom the ball went, who was offside. Woodward, Aston, Husband is on the right, this is Fuchsia, and this will be Husband now, good try, oh what a fine goal, Jimmy Husband enjoyed that, and it's 2-0 for Luton, Roy McLeod on his feet, the coach, and here we were in a classic situation of a home side, a goal down, they pushed people forward and they got caught on the break. Aston to Ron Fuchsia, Ron Fuchsia to husband, and you don't see finishing like that every day of the week. Beautifully struck. Just under the hour gone. Three two, Sheffield United lost here to Bristol Rovers. Three two, they lost to Bolton, and now, in their third consecutive home league match, they're two down to Luton. <laughs> Buckley did well, and the Sheffield United fans growing a little restless with their side as Luton come forward again. Aston skipping his way down that wing. He skipped bus two, and the second one felled him. Colin Franks, I think it was, who got the yellow card. It's been a trying afternoon for him out there against a winger who shows most fullbacks a clean pair of heels. And so Franks' name goes into the book of referee Perkin. Delightful play, though, by Aston, who hugs the line and now takes the free kick. Fucha got in there, but didn't quite make contact. Very close. Noticeable how Aston can bend these free kicks either way. He's got plenty of variations on the set pieces. Franks. Aimed at Guthrie. Husband across to West and again Aston there 
Here he goes again, and he skipped past the two again. And Husband is there! And that is 3-0. Jimmy Husband gets his second, but what a performance Aston is producing now on the left wing. Harry Haslam calls him the postman because he collects everything they give to him, and then he delivers. And he delivered there, down the left, past two defenders, pulled it back, fine play, and Husband's job, well, really, it was made easy. So this is becoming something of an embarrassment now for Sheffield United, who find themselves three goals down. McKee then. Garner in attack. And a little bit of uh, off-the-ball scuffling went on there between Paul Future and Garner, who, or rather, um, Hamilton, who'd stayed there when Garner had gone and had a little bit of an argument and a scuffle which has had to be calmed down. One of those spur-of-the-moment things, I think, that just came to the boil and sensibly dealt with by the referee. Cahoon, Garner. Good build-up, this by Sheffield United. This is McKee. Guthrie coming in. Well, what can you say? Chris Guthrie was the man with the header. Connected with it well, kept it low, but Alexic seems determined not to be beaten this afternoon. And Garner got a nasty crack there, and so did Paul Fucci. That was a really hard, fair tackle, but it hurt both players. Harry Haslam... Uh, over on the Luton bench, there's not much point in any substitutes getting ready because we're already in injury time. Referee will restart the match by dropping the ball because he halted play. And in fact, I think Paul Fucci wants to go off and Roy McCrowan is still on the field trying to tell Harry Haslam that he's going to have his number six come off. And indeed, the Luton substitute is going to get stripped. Although there can only be a matter of seconds, I would think, left for play. And the whistle goes before the substitute, David Carr, could come on. Sheffield United supporters have seen them concede nine goals now in three home games. And the men who did the damage today were Jimmy Husband, once of Everton, he scored two. And John Aston, once of Manchester United, whose second-half performance was something to admire. While it was 1-0, United were in the match. But once Luton scored the second, then the points were only going one way.